Okay, so right now I'm gonna show you guys how to do a CVC or a central line dressing change. Please remember to always follow your checklist. Um, some things I may do a little bit out of order based on how I do it in my own practice. But if you are being checked off on it, you have to follow your checklist um, or follow your policy within the organization. So first thing I wanna do is have everything set up. So I've got my patient um, at a good working height. I've got my table at a nice good working height. Um, and then I've got the side rail down by me and the side rail up away from me. So first thing I wanna do is clean my table. So I'm cleaning this with a specific sandy wipe. And then we're gonna throw that away in the trash. You wanna make sure that dries completely. Strong. All right, now I'm gonna get my stuff. So this is a central line dressing kit um, that we have here. Make sure that it has everything that you need because some of them don't have a bio patch like this. Some of them don't have a stat lock, which we would have this in a package, but here's the stat lock. Um, we have our setup specifically so that way they don't stick to our mannequins. Um, there are also some kits that have the stat lock already embedded in the kit. There are also some that don't use the stat lock at all. And then the Tegaderm or the clear dressing has that kind of medication in it to um, help prevent infection on our patient. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do it with what we have available. So first thing I wanna do is hand hygiene. So you always wanna clean your hands. <clears throat> I always like to have an extra set of sterile gloves. There's one in the kit and you need another one. Um, but like I said, I like to have an extra. Then you wanna open up a couple alcohol swabs. You're gonna need these um, to remove the stat lock. So I like to put them where they're not touching the table. Usually two will be good, so we'll just use two for right now. Well, we'll do another one just so that way it's standing up. Okay, you guys can see I've got these standing up. That way they don't um, touch the table. All right, walk into your patient's room, check the order, introduce yourself, and let them know you're gonna do a dressing change. I'm gonna expose the patient. And you wanna tell your patient, make sure throughout this entire time you move as little as possible. Um, also, I'm going to have you turn your head away from the site. I'm going to put a mask on you here in just a moment. So, when you open up your kit, remember, every sterile kit's an alligator, so you always open it away from you. I can go around if I need to. Now that that's open, you cannot go back over it. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of reach in a little bit. We don't wanna reach all the way over, but I'm just gonna kind of reach in here. I'm gonna get the first mask. And I'm gonna put the mask on my patient. And when the mask, we're going to say that it looped around him, I'm also going to turn his head away from the site. Anyone else in the room must have a mask, but ideally have everyone leave. Um, to try to prevent contamination. I would then put a mask on myself. So we're gonna do this. Now I am going to re remove my mask just so you guys can actually hear me talking, but make sure throughout this entire time you leave your mask on. Okay. Then I am going to put in a regular pair of gloves. During this time you need to make sure um, that you never turn your back on your sterile tray. If my back goes to this tray, it's no longer sterile. I'll put on a regular pair of gloves. <clears throat> and as I'm doing this, we gotta take off our dressing. So if we're over here, this kind of dressing has what we call pants. So you gotta take the pants off of the mannequin. And that's just this extra part right here. It's the stabilization part. Okay, you can see it kind of goes up underneath that patient. Now you want to roll all of this into itself. So what I mean by that is I'm getting the tape off as much as I can. And you can see it's kind of rolling into itself. Now, as I mentioned before with the stat lock, 
our mannequins, um, we don't want to put the sticky directly on the mannequin. So I am going to use my finger to kind of help with this. Okay. But you want to make sure as you're folding this onto itself, you keep the site covered and you keep this right here, the hub covered. The rest of it can all be off. It does also come off of our patients a little bit easier than a mannequin because a mannequin is plastic. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off because like I said, it's not stuffed to our mannequin the same way that it would stick to a patient. Okay, so that's kind of like that. <clears throat> now I'm gonna discard my gloves. After you take gloves off, you always perform hand hygiene. Okay, here's where there's some variation of what you can actually do. Some people get their kit set up right now and some people like to wait until the second round of sterile gloves. I'm gonna go ahead and just pinch in here and grab my first set of sterile gloves but I'm going to put things in. So in this situation, we have the bio patch. Um, we also have the stat lock. So as I mentioned, we do put Velcro on our stat locks. That way it doesn't go against our patients. So I would open this up in a sterile fashion and put it in my kit. Now I'm gonna open this up in a sterile fashion. So you wanna open it, remember, away from you, like it's an alligator. And then just drop it into your kit about six inches or so above. I'm gonna move my kit off to the side because if I don't move my kit off to the side, I risk covering it up with um, some of the sterile gloves and you don't wanna do that because that would no longer be sterile. So we're gonna open these up. You can watch the previous video of how I do sterile gloving if you want a step-by-step -step detail. You can see I'm being very, very cautious to make sure that I don't make this paper go over that Remember, I like to take a big step back. Put the glove on. Keep my thumb out. And put the next glove on. Now, there's a couple things you can do. I like to just move this off to the side. That way it's not in my way. Remember now, my hands are sterile, just like my sterile kit. At no point in time can I turn my back on the kit and I have to keep my hands in front of me at all times. So I'm gonna scooch my kit over here towards me a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare it. Again, some people do this at a later step. There's a lot of things in this kit that we don't need for this specific um, skill. So I'm gonna take out the drape, tape, alcohol swabs, sandy hands, that's just hand sanitizer. This extra gauze here. So what I wanna do is keep a no sting barrier film. Um, at this point in time, I would tear it open and just have it setting in my kit. I'm not gonna do that right now because we don't wanna put that barrier cream on our mannequins because we'll never get anything off of it. Then I also have um, my stat lock. I kind of move the wings, these are little wings, just a couple of times, not a lot. If you do it a lot, you risk breaking them off, but just a couple of times, that way I make sure that it's loose enough. And these little blue guys in here, you wanna make sure that they're also loose enough because sometimes they like to get stuck. So I need, and then there's a tegaderm right here. Um, this is where some of these tegaderms have um, the chlorhexidine that you'll find on the bio patch. I like to separate my bio patch like that. And then this right here is the chloroprep. That's the stuff that's gonna clean the insertion site. So now when I go up to my patient, I'm gonna pick a sterile hand and what we call a clean hand. Some people call it a dirty hand. Basically, it's the one that's not sterile. So I'm gonna take my clean hand. I like to make my sterile hand by the patient's head every time. It helps me avoid contamination. So I'm gonna take my clean hand and you want to pull the dressing off in one nice swoop. If the bio patch, which happens to be right here, if that bio patch does not come off, you can use your sterile hand and pick it up. Okay. So now we're gonna throw this in the trash. Then I'm going to take my clean hand again and you need to pop open your wings. So to do that, you might need to use your thumb and pop it. Again, this is a little bit different just because it's not stuck to our mannequin. 
so we've loosened it you're going to pick up this sterile or pick that pick this up you can use your sterile hand if you want to stabilize which is completely fine but make sure that these fingers don't touch the patient so we're going to do that now i'm going to use that clean hand and grab that alcohol i opened up earlier we're going to scooch that out of the way opened up earlier and you're going to clean around that stat lock so normally this paper is gone and this is stuck directly to our mannequins but as i mentioned we've got velcro and that just helps so that way it doesn't stick to our mannequins permanently then i would throw that out as well you might have to use alcohol to get it off now i'm going to use my sterile hand and i want to assess my site you want to look at it is there any redness swelling drainage any of that kind of stuff present and then you want to feel it is there any crepitus crepitus is that like rice krispies the little popping um, is there like a warmth to it you can feel swelling as well. Make sure that as you're doing that, you just verbalize and you assess everything that's on your checklist. So we've done that. Now, I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna take off my sterile gloves, clean my hands and get ready to actually clean the site. Be very, very cautious at this point in time, um, just because if your patient moves around a lot, um, they could easily pull out their pick line. It is not necessarily sutured in. This one, for example, is not. Um, some central line dressings are. So we're gonna take it off sterile. Gonna grab that middle, pull it off, go underneath, and pull it off. Okay, now I'm gonna kind of move some things around here. Remember my little kit right here is sterile, so we gotta be very careful with him. Now I'm gonna use some hand hygiene because I took off some gloves. Okay, remember, keeping, keeping my eye on my kit, keeping my eye on my patient. I'm gonna open up these gloves and put them on sterilely. them on remember we're not touching anything in there so if your fingers get messed up or anything you want to wait till they get on and then you can adjust them because remember sterile can touch sterile okay so I'm gonna pinch this I'm just gonna move it out of my way and then um, hands have to be always above your waist to be sterile okay now I'm gonna pick my clean and sterile hand again sterile hand is the only one that goes into that kit so I always like my sterile hand to be by that patient's head. As I mentioned, it just helps prevent me from accidentally crossing my clean hand over my sterile hand. So sterile hand is going to reach in here. It's gonna grab the chloroprep. So chloroprep is the cleaner, calls of chlorhexidine. Um, this one happens to be a stick. There are some that are like wipes and um, like swab sticks. So I picked it out with my sterile hand. I'm gonna pass it to my clean hand. Clean hand, I'm gonna squeeze these and crack it. And then that inside starts to get wet. Remember this hand I gotta be able to see. So you're gonna clean at the insertion site first. You wanna definitely do it with a little pressure but not super hard where you're gonna pull it out. Um, follow your policy. Um, the one I most recently read was 30 seconds. But remember it may be different where you're at. After you do it for 30 seconds, then you can start cleaning down the tube. Remember, you never go down and back up. So as I'm cleaning it, now I can use my sterile hand if I want and stabilize that tube. This light blue part is called the hub. The hub, above the hub can be touched by that sterile hand, below the hub cannot. So remember, I'm kind of just cleaning down. You wanna make sure you clean all your tubes. Okay. Drop that. Now, I'm gonna reach in my kit. So one thing people ask is, you know, skin is not sterile. So in theory, we have touched some of the skin, but it's as sterile as it can possibly be. So I'm gonna take the, the um, my glove, and I'm gonna take that no sting barrier, pass it to my clean hand. 
Now, these are not good for mannequins, but you'll just wanna put this on the area where your um, stat lock is gonna go, because it's gonna help make it nice and sturdy. Don't put it directly on the site, because then it can burn. All right, I'm gonna throw that out. Now I'm gonna reach back into my kit with my sterile hand, grab out this stat lock, pass it to my clean hand, and you're gonna put it where you think you're gonna use it. Okay, so I put it down. Now, if you remember, I said I can touch above the site with that hand and below the site with this one. So, if you need to, there's the little blue guys in there, you have to make sure that you you might have to go fishing for it a little bit, so you might have to move it around. And then you're going to use your clean hand, and you're going to push the things closed. You will have to push on your patient a little bit. You can push with your clean hand, but make sure you don't actually touch the hub with your clean hand. Okay. So it's nice and stabilized on our patient. Now we got our sterile hand. We're going to reach in, grab our bio patch. This is the only time you're not going to pass it to your clean hand because bio patch is sterile. The blue side goes up on this particular bio patch. Make sure you know your product. So you wanna put that slit, think about a clock. We're gonna put it like at six o'clock-ish, and then you wanna give it a little turn. That little turn helps keep it in place, but because it's still close to six o'clock, we turned it to about seven o'clock. Um, it makes it so it's easier to come off. Now, we can really reach into our kit with any hand. I like to kind of be consistent with my motor memory and reach in with my sterile hand. When you do this, you need to put your dressing on. So I always open with the sticky side away. Remember that alligator that I always talk about? So sticky side away from me because I don't wanna breathe on this. Now on the outside, there's this area that's not sticky, which I can kind of hold and grab. And you need to look about where you're gonna put your thing. This clear window is what I'm gonna to use to assess my patient. So the entire bio patch and hub need to be covered. So you see my bio patch is covered and the hub is covered. Some of the stat lock may not be. So I wanna push this down on my patient. There's this extra paper, so you can pull that off. And some of our products, this white part is heat activated, which makes it stick more. Um, not all products do that, but I like to rub it because the heat from me and the patient, is gonna make it stick better. Then these are the pants. Make sure you're careful when you pull them off because sometimes they like to get curled up. I'm gonna take it off like this. You can lift up your cords and this is gonna go underneath. You want it to be as close to the tubes as possible, prevent as much um, bacteria from being able to get up. Okay. And then you're gonna use your label and label it with the date, time, and your initials so they know who actually did the dressing. Um, and make sure you don't put it over top of that clear field so you can't see. And now we're going to go ahead and cover up our patient. At this point in time, I would remove my sterile gloves Perform hand hygiene, you can also go ahead and um, put on another pair of gloves if you need to do any more patient care. I'm gonna take off the patient's mask and my mask at this time. Then, as always, lower your patient, um, the bed to the lowest position, side rails up, and make sure your patient has everything that they need. 